little fluff and puff today in St. Catharines, Ontario. And I have our five dogs in here getting groomed. They're all, well, four miniature schnauzers and one's a Westie Poo. But today we picked Nosy, who looks like an Ewok right now. And you would never know she's a miniature schnauzer. This is Joan, and Joan has been here since when? 1976. 1976. And I'll tell you what, she grooms my cockapoo, my Karen Terrier, my mom's dogs, my dogs. We've been here forever taking our dogs. So, Joan is going to show you a typical schnauzer cut um, today. This, they're getting their uh, winter cut. They've just gone all the way through winter. They've got really long hair. They're going to have come out looking gorgeous today. So, what is the first thing that you do, Joan? First we do a workout. Okay. Take off all the hair that we can, so we don't have to bath and dry it. Okay. And then we can do it on the wall. Oh, okay, so you cut first and then wash. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Nosy. She's a good girl. Yes. <laughs> and today, as our preference, we always keep their eyebrows and their beard um, intact. And you will see, as soon as Nosy is fully clipped here, what we do next. Thank you, Joan. Uh, you're welcome. Nosy's about to get her ears trimmed. What do you find is the um, most difficult part about the groom? Well, getting the mat so that they have lots of tangles that's hard on the dog. Uh huh. But if they're not too tangled, it makes it a lot easier. Okay. And how long have you been grooming? I've been moving since 1966. Woo! That's awesome. That's some serious experience. Okay. Very capable hands. That's a fun dog. Yeah? What's your favorite breed to groom? Oh, I like them all. Yeah? Yeah. And where did you learn to do this? I worked in a poodle shop, and the lady there, um, she taught me how to groom everything. Oh, really? Yeah, it takes about two years, two and a half years before you really get good enough that, you know, you, can't, you don't want to cut them or anything, so yes. it takes a long time. Uh-huh. You're working on a, a live animal. Mm-hmm. I would imagine it'd be difficult with, with some dogs. Some of them are. Some of them have their own mind. Yes. Nosy just happens to be a perfect little girl. Yeah, she's very, very good. <laughs> yes. As you can see, she's really trimming the um, ears down tightly. And the snout. But she leaves the eyebrows intact and the beard intact. Nosy's going to look pretty sleek today. Now Nosy is a platinum miniature schnauzer. Um, she was pitch black when she was born and about a year later she turned nearly silver. So she's a rare breed and uh, she's our sweet, sweet baby. Okay. Okay. Wow, she really is a miniature schnauzer underneath all that fur. Who knew? People have been asking me for a few months what kind of dogs they are. <laughs> so I knew we needed to get room. <laughs> they end up looking pretty pudgy over winter, and underneath there is a sleek athletic body. Now Nosy's ears, when she was born, um, they docked her ears and they docked her tail. That's why they stand straight up. Um, our boy Captain, as you've seen in many pictures, uh, he has undocked ears, but they stand straight up. And 
Precious, my mother's dog you've seen just recently on a series on Terrier Lover. Um, she has undocked ears and they flop down. So you get to see a wide variety when it comes to mini schnauzers. In fact, I think in Canada here, um, it's illegal now to dock ears. We got our babies in Dallas, Texas. Seem to be too matted. Not too bad. Now, what do you do with dogs that are unruly? How do you manage? Do you, you have another person hold them, or yeah. okay? Yeah. And do you often have to use muzzles? I said a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I hope the owners tell you that beforehand. Well, some of them come in and muzzle in the middle of the Okay, we'll be back in just a second. Are you kidding? I'm famous already. <laughs> <laughs> Nosy is now ready for the bath. I have to bring in this dog of here. Okay. Please stay there, sweetheart. Mommy will watch you. Nosy, you look beautiful. Yes, You're a good girl. We're all ready for the bath, baby. All right, Nosy's going to get a bath. Not really her favorite thing, but she's quite good in the bath. Probably the best of all of them. Captain being the worst. For me, anyway. He's just a little active. He is. So what kind of shampoo do you use? What is your suggestion for people? Whatever kind of base we use a lot of aloe and vera. Mm -hmm. It's a really good for, it's really good for the skin, especially if dogs are being bathed at home too. Yes. So if you use something really gentle. Which ours are because they sleep on the bed. Yeah. So yes. they are washed regularly. And it's also, we also have uh, shampoos for baking soda. Mm -hmm. Does that keep them from itching? Or? Yeah. yeah, we have a uh, big shampoo in case it's a, a puppy or a dog that has really sensitive. Okay. And while the dog is doing, well, this dog I know well, but if it's a dog I don't know well, they're being worked up and their coat's being taken off, we're mm -hmm. looking at the skin to see what kind of shampoo we use. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Yeah. I'm not sure if all groomers do that, but I'm glad you guys do. Well, we've been here a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and what would you say the most important thing about the bathing is? Making sure you get all of the soap out at the end. Okay. That's why we use a pressure hose so we can be sure every last drop is out. Okay. And really cleaning. You have to really soap them up and really scrub. Yes. I, I'm, sure. I'm sure a lot of people, when they bring them to the groomers, it might be the only time they actually do get bathed. Most. Really? Yes, most are only, only bathed at the groomer. Huh. So you must have a lot of dirt coming out from yeah, winter. But that's okay. Yeah. We don't mind. <laughs> it's all part of the job. Yes. So at home, people, be sure that you rinse your doggies very, very well so it doesn't cause any skin problems or skin itchiness or anything like that. Is it important to condition your dog? Depends again on the coat. If the dog is really dry and has a really dry coat, then I use a, a conditioner. Mm -hmm. And my favorite is Fresh and Clean Oatmeal and Baking Soda Conditioner because it smells fabulous. Really? Okay. But if, if on a schnauzer, if the coat is all, or the skin is already in good shape, a conditioner only makes them greasy. Oh, okay. So if, it, if the dog's in good shape, I don't use a conditioner. Now, is this um, safe for their eyes? This is this a, like a no tears like you would use at home? The, no. The, the, okay. uh, anything with oatmeal and aloe isn't, isn't safe for the eyes, but we just go around. Okay, so we don't get near the eyes. that's why they're the pros, people. At home, please use no tear shampoo. <laughs> yes, that's very important. And at the very end of the bath, it's also very important that we check an anal gland to make sure there's no blockages or problems where they need a vet. And we, in most cases, empty the gland. Yes, I have actually done that at home. It's not my favorite job. Mine either. Um, this gland is empty. That's good. Now, Captain, our boy schnauzer, and Precious, my mother's puppy, probably have the worst problem with the anal glands. Um, you may not have even ever heard it. My vet has never told us about it until we actually got our first puppy. 
um, from our new breeder. It smells um, probably the most horrendous thing you've ever smelled in your life. Um, but it is necessary to get out because it can become impacted, I guess you would say. That's right. It impacts and it can be a very expensive trip to the vet. It can also rupture. If it ruptures, it's very painful for the dog. So if you don't want to do this at home, you you will definitely want to wear gloves at home, and I see that's probably why she's wearing gloves now. Um, but be sure you ask your groomer um, if they do that, and to make sure they know that you want them to do that, because I'm sure there's a lot of groomers out there that will not do this. True. Yeah, we're uh, we're full service. We do everything. Yes. And on on white dogs, I know the new the new hotness, so to speak, is um, the little white schnauzers. With a white dog, um, do you use a special shampoo to keep their fur white or to... We don't. There are, there are many whitening shampoos, but they contain bleach, and I will not use anything unnatural on a dog. Okay. So we don't... We just scrub. <laughs> yeah, that's good to know. Scrubbing. That's good to know, because if you buy those um, whitener-type shampoos, and bring them home for your dog, now you know they're not good for your dog's skin. And the dog can't go home and say, Mom, my skin's itchy. Right. So very important that we speak for them and take care of them. Nosy is a very good girl. She's not even moving. <laughs> the water's the perfect temperature and she's liking it. She's a good girl. I like how you have the chains just taut enough so that they can't move. Don't but, want her um, to get hurt or jump out or do anything that's going to hurt her, but exactly. there's still lots of room. How big a dog can you fit in here? I don't think you'd fit a Newfie in here. Yeah, we do. You really? Yeah, we do. We, we, we go up to about 85 pounds. We don't go much over that because there's too much to lift. But 85 to 100 pounds fit this tub. And if you don't already know, um, Poodle Fluff and Puff is my very favorite groomer in the Niagara region. So if you're in the Niagara region and you need your dog washed, clean, groomed, anything like that, if you come up for Christmas or anything like that, be sure to call them up. Your is? 905-688-6200. Okay. The nicest people you could ever meet. And they love your dogs. So now... What happens? She Just obviously gets dried. I'm going to wring out a little bit of this excess water so she doesn't have to be under the dryer any longer than she has to be. Then we'll give her a little towel dry. To go girl. To go girl. Okay, so we'll see Nosy in At just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Nosy's getting towel dried. Still being a good girl. And this is the dryer that they use. And uh, can you tell me a bit more about it? It's a big boy dryer. A big boy. Made by Roster. Okay. And it's a high power. It can run for hours and hours and hours without heating up or having a problem. I guess that's good for summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has lots of different settings here. In the summer, we tend to use more fans and cool air. And well, you go, sorry. The, with the air conditioning, too, this dryer makes it so the air conditioner is useless. And it's relatively quiet. It probably keeps them calm. Yeah, we're not afraid of it. Any dog that is, then we don't use it. Now, Nosy, you must know, is very scared of the hair dryer at home. In fact, she wants to kill it when it, when it comes out. But she seems to be doing pretty well here. Whining just because she wants mommy. And how long do you, would you say that it takes to dry her? About half an hour. Maybe it, not quite as long as her. She's not feel so, so you brush her to be sure it doesn't... I guess tangle up. Use a, a slicker brush with a bent bristle. Okay. And I brush upward to make sure there's no tangles. And uh, once the spot is drawn, then I, at the end I'll comb through everything. And then she's ready to go on to the finishing table for her final hair. So is this what makes her so beautifully fluffy? Yes. Nosy quite likes getting brushed. They like to come up and uh, beg for brushing when another one's being brushed. Um, she's not crazy about her belly being brushed. I think it's more sensitive than the other dogs. Every dog is different. And if you let them, the dogs will tell you what they like and don't like, and then you can adjust to whatever they need. Okay. And if you do run into a little mat, Great. It doesn't hurt the dog at all. 
What do you think about those little combs that slice them out, sort of thing? We use rakes and slicers. Is that what it's called? Okay. Yeah, usually on a big dog, and a little dog like this, it's too hard on the skin. Okay. It's easier to just, it's much gentler if you just use scissors. Um, for the lay person, they're quite awkward to use, I think, too. They move quite a bit. You have to run them along the skin, but you, at the same time, you can't put them right on the skin harder. They'll, they'll hurt the skin. They don't want to break any skin or get any damage. Now this is just a rough cut. Notice he's going to be even shorter than this. And look even more miniature schnauzer-like. There's that typical brick face that we love so much. And I just happen to know that your very favorite dog to groom is a miniature schnauzer. I do enjoy miniature schnauzers. I've owned them in the past. And they have, they have a character all around. And I understand it makes for easy grooming. And from what I know, you've actually won some awards for your grooming. Yes. Uh, for miniature schnauzers, not for a few years, but I used to compete. I used to compete in the 90s, and I won quite a time. Now, have you ever owned a miniature schnauzer? I've had three. Oh. And what kind of dog do you have now? A German Shepherd. Really? <laughs> wow. Yep. That's quite a different <laughs> breed. Five weeks old, and she's seven now. Did Did you rescue her? No, she was a. Uh, for sale as a puppy mm -hmm. from the people that I knew and I knew she was well bred and I knew that their her parents were really well cared for so my husband wanted a big dog so we got mm -hmm. um, to you what's the most difficult thing about grooming an inch schnauzer? The D mat. Yes? Yeah, you have to be so careful. And under a mat there can be a hot spot and a hot spot can turn into a sore yeah, and when the dog goes home they start chewing at it or digging at it, then they have a serious problem. Now mats actually, they tangle up and they pull at the skin. Yes? Okay. If the mat is serious enough, every time the dog moves their legs, the skin moves too and the mats pull mm -hmm. and it hurts. And that's not fair. Yes, it's not fair. So it's important to try and brush your dog regularly, even if you get them groomed, um, just to be sure you're maintaining. I mean, you brush your own hair every day, so it's the same with the dog. Sometimes a dog can go six months without anybody doing anything. When they come in, they're batted so solid, they have to use a blade right down to the skin huh. to take it off. It's pretty not fair to cause the tree. And I noticed even um, some dogs get embarrassed at their haircut. I think they have feelings. I know when we had our cockapoo, his, his name was Killer and he was not a killer. But I know when he came home with a short haircut, he knew it. <laughs> a lot of times when people come to pick them up, the people laugh at them. They yeah. really upset the dogs. Yep. My dad would laugh at Killer and he would seriously hide behind the couch for two days. <laughs> he was so embarrassed. Especially if he came home with a bow like we liked. <laughs> Okay, we'll be back in just a second when she's just a little bit further on Nosy. Thanks, Nosy. Nosy. She's going to continue drying just a little bit more, the deep, the deep dry. And, but she looks pretty fluffy and she looks like a schnauzer and I'm shocked. I, my favorite time of year is bringing them after, for the, after all their big huge winter coat and then picking them up looking so sleek and beautiful. And Nosy's a good girl. You good girl? Oh. All right, we are back with Joan. And what's the next step here? This is the finish. Okay. You take off anything we never got off in the workout. Okay. Now he's been bath, blow dry, and ready for the finishing. Okay, and the finishing means, I guess you clip it shorter. Yeah, just make it smooth. Okay. I love how smooth it is when it come home. Yeah. Like a buzz cut. That's right. It makes it nice and smooth. Now I always feel comfortable bringing my dog here. I know they're being treated well. They're being treated with love as though they were their own dog.
So I guess what's important with a schnauzer cut is you leave the hair on the legs and you leave an apron, is that what it's called? Yeah, we call it a skirt. A skirt? Apron. Okay. It makes them look pretty tidy. Yes. Now, if you've ever tried a schnauzer cut at home, it's not a simple task. Uh, Kenny and I tried when Captain was a baby and we were in Dallas, and uh, it didn't work out so well. It was um, pretty patchy and difficult to get, so it's nice to have a professional do it. I know they're showing you here, but I'll tell you what, it's much more difficult than they make it look. <laughs> Now the way the way we prefer it cut is um, pretty similar to what they would be looking like if they were going into show. That's a show cut. Yep. This long skirt. Good. Now Nosy is a smooth coat mini schnauzer. Um, Curious and Captain are both more wiry. Um, their hair gets less matted. Uh, Nosy and Precious have the smooth coat and they get quite a bit of mats, mm -hmm. as I said earlier. Um, but I know Nosy, when she's cut and fluffed up, it, it's much more fluffy. Now, Debbie was saying earlier that on the wire coats that you don't want to use um, something about the shampoo. What did she say? The conditioner. You, you want to condition it more less shampoo. Um, with the smooth coat, it's the opposite. You want to use more shampoo, really scrub them down well, and use less conditioner because it would make them look greasy. Yeah, that's yes? true. And, and then it's not a nice fluffy job when it's finished. Yes, and that's what I love the most is when their legs are yeah. so fluffy. Yeah. Now, do you, you must groom a lot of terriers. Quite a few. Yeah. Yeah, I like doing the terriers. Yeah. A little tangle under here, so I'll just cut it out instead of uh, combing it out. A lot easier on the dog. Okay, it is. Okay, we'll be back at the next step. Okay, so you're just cutting her little feet, the cleaning, pads. Cleaning the pads out. In between. Yeah. Now why is that important? Well, it can get like a big mat in there, and then it's hard for the dog to walk on it. It's very uncomfortable. So we just snip it all out. And but it's a very delicate area. You have to be very yes, careful. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah, you have to be careful. Now, as I was talking to Joan, or to Debbie before, uh, Curious and Captain are going to be breeding in April, we hope, and we'll be hopefully bringing little puppies in for our first little groom, and that doesn't consist of a lot, uh, really it's just a buzz from the head to the bum, one strip along the back, but the puppies are so cute, they just have a broom face and um, just cute little things. We just love the puppies. Yes. Oh, so cute. Now what's cool about the Poodle Fluff and Pup is that it's a family owned operation. This is mom, daughter, and two granddaughters that work here. And uh, that's nice to know because they don't want to let anyone else in because they want to make sure that the dogs are being treated appropriately. With care. Kindness. Kindness. And I think that's the uh, thing that makes most people nervous about bringing their dog to the groomer. We, uh, when Killer was a puppy, we had brought him to a veterinarian to be groomed, which I will not discuss here, but he came out with cuts on his belly, his nails were clipped too far and they were bleeding, and uh, needless to say, that's when we found Poodle Bluff and Puff, and we've never gone anywhere since. That's nice to hear. Yeah. Ready? Yep. 
Okay, we're cleaning up the face and she's looking like she's cutting pretty close on the neck. You want that to be nice and flat. The ears want to be completely seen, right? Yeah. And inside the ears, I think they, they're going to clip soon. But we're going to keep her big, beautiful eyebrows, which is so schnauzer-like, and the pretty beard. How good she is. <laughs> Not many girls would be happy to hear that they've got a nice beard. <laughs> but Nosy has a very nice beard. And very long eyelashes, surprisingly long eyelashes. You would be so shocked. Now, most terriers are almost cut like this, right? Yes. Yeah. Terriers have the eyebrows and the big beards. Mm -hmm. um, the Dan I guess the Bedlington is the only one with a stranger cut, kind of like an egghead. Different, all totally different. Mm -hmm. But their head isn't actually shaped egghead like a bull terrier, but it's cut, it's cut like that. Full head. Yes. And they, do they, they have um, fur more like a poodle, don't they? And cottony, mm -hmm. and it really tangles. Huh. Bed Bedlington is the worst one for really tangled. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> ears? Beautiful ears. Now, um, a lot of people say that they, it is, um, not very humane thing to jock their ears as a puppy. However, um, in our experience, our dogs with the floppy ears, um, Sugar and Precious, both have chronic ear infections. Um, if their ears were docked, uh, like Nosy or Captain or Curious, um, they have never had an ear problem ever. And my vet will tell me different. He'll say it has nothing to do with it. But um, just from experience, all of our dogs who have had open ears, have had never a problem. Um, the, the thing is, is that no air can get in there. If they get moist, then uh, things start growing. Now it's important to keep your dog's ears um, free of a lot of hair, because I guess it could get matted in there too, right? And yes, then it um, sure can. Then it could cause ear infections as well. And then it's hard to get rid of it once yes. they get. It. Well, curious and precious, or, or sorry, precious and sugar have chronic ear infections, as I said, and they are on antibiotics every single day, and the vet said it'll be like that for life. If we miss a couple days um, in between, their ear flares up again, and it's really unfortunate. It really does. Yeah, don't you look neat? So at 2 o'clock, we Okay. Beautiful girl dog. He's a gorgeous baby. Haha. <laughs> Look at you! You're a mini schnauzer! <laughs> now this is a typical mini schnauzer cut. And she's just a gorgeous. Nosy's finished. She looks like a beautiful miniature schnauzer. Ready for the show if I wanted to show her. And I just wanted to thank very much Joan and Miss Debbie for always being at my beck and call. <laughs> and I know one girl that's going to be a happy puppy to have mommy all to herself this afternoon while they're taking care of our other four. And I just really wanted to make sure you guys check out Poodle Fluff and Puff in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Yay to them. Uh, make sure you guys visit terrierlover.com for more information on all the terriers you could imagine. Thank you. Bye.